immediately. Um, in the area of human rights, you work and you work and you work and you hope for change to come a little bit down the road. And if our kids see some of the results of this work, then we're lucky. I, I'm grateful that I'm, I've been proven wrong, not in theory, but at least in practice, because of what happened in Egypt. Let me give you two or three or four examples of change that has already happened and is really significant. First of all, the relationship between the governing and the governed in Egypt has been transformed, I think, forever. We call it a social contract. A new social contract was signed uh, between the future governing president or, or, or prime minister of Egypt and the people. Um, on January 25th in Tahrir Square, which is the main square where all these events sort of emanated and transpired, and became the symbol of, of Egypt's movement towards democracy. Um, every and any future president or prime minister or cabinet minister in Egypt has a totally new dynamic to deal with in his or her relationship with the people. They are going to be much more accountable, much more open to scrutiny, and held to the highest standards by the people, and that is something like it. So right there, that is a very, very important improvement that we uh, have to acknowledge. Second one, or one other point, Egypt had suffered in particularly in the last three or four or five years from a widespread uh, phenomenon of corruption <coughs> and cronyism um, that was just getting worse by the day, unfortunately. We, we were doing well economically. There was a lot of progress. Egypt was achieving uh, about 7% annual growth for a number of successive years, which was pretty good, but that wasn't felt enough by enough people because of a lot of corruption that existed. I think, and no country can claim that they have zero corruption, but I can contend or, or claim that it's going to be much harder to get away with, with stuff that used to happen before the revolution in the future. Another point that's really of value is people's involvement. I think with all of the <coughs> situation that existed over the past couple of decades, people became empathetic, not interested. They were almost cynical about the whole political process. And all of a sudden, they now, everyone sees, feels very empowered. If anyone here reads Arabic or if there are Egyptians in the crowd, you can uh, go online. Just look at the number of websites, number of newspapers, blogs, the activism that is out there. You get a sense that everybody of every generation is very much involved in even the micro issues, not even the, not just the global ones. Mr. Ambassador, yes. Um, I have a question. Uh, I was wondering, uh, well, are, are you aware why, while you're speaking right now there are major protests in, in cities in Europe and in North America against the prosecution of civilians uh, in military courts? The bloggers and the activists you are talking about, the bloggers, the bloggers and the activists you're, you're talking about, they are taken to jail. There are tw more than 12,000. There are more than 12,000 prisoners in military jail right now, while we're speaking, and they are increasing by time. I don't want to call security, sir. Yes, you can answer me. Please, please, we can do this after. I, I want him to, to answer. This is not the appropriate time. I asked if there is a, a, a time for questions. They said no. I need to know the answer from my ambassador. Sir. Can you answer me, please? Well, uh, if, uh, with the if, if we can hold the question to the, question to the very end, we'll, sure. we'll have him ask the question then. Okay.